I have a problem. No, not that, something else. What happens when artists we really enjoy uh, say something really disagreeable or do something illegal or unsavory or a combination of these things? Um, can we still like their work? That's the topic for today's episode of The Kazdoy Closet. I'm Kazdoy. This is my closet full of all the stuff that I love. And today we look at three artists, their controversies, their best work, and whether I can still appreciate them or not, we'll find out at the end. Plus, by popular demand, another word of the day. The first artist I want to talk about is Eric Clapton. We all know who Eric Clapton is, right? Rock guitar god. Started with the group The Yardbirds, moved on to John Mayall's Blues Breakers, uh, the group Cream, Blind Faith, uh, his own uh, band, Derek and the Dominoes, and... Um, then his own solo career. And um, I have this one uh, box set, which I think is maybe the first box set I ever bought. And it's Eric Clapton and Crossroads, which covers a great deal of his career. And uh, I think his best work is probably still Layla by Derek and the Dominoes. And well, what's the controversy with Eric Clapton? Well, he, um, he won't perform at any venues where it's required that all the uh, attendees are vaccinated even though the Prime Minister of England is um, requiring that. Um, Clapton was vaccinated in May with the AstraZeneca vaccine and he had a pretty bad reaction but he did have underlying condition and that comes to our words of the day which is, let me get this right, peripheral neuropathy. What is that? Well, it's when the nerves are carrying messages to and from the brain and the spinal cord to the body and they become diseased or damaged. So as you can imagine, that had quite a debilitating effect on his guitar playing. So he uh, started spouting a lot of anti-vaccine rhetoric because of this. He started citing uh, some anti-vaccine uh, videos and COVID conspiracy videos on YouTube. And then he started doing some songs with Van Morrison, who I've talked about before. And they both uh, are these uh, criticizing the lockdowns and questioning the COVID science, uh, so on and so forth. Um, and they're trying to make it look like they're being heroic and that they are, you know, being rebellious and fighting against tyranny. I think my dog uh, agrees with that. Um, interestingly, I just found out too that the uh, activist group Rock Against Racism was actually formed because Clapton was making some disparaging remarks about uh, black musicians, and which is really odd considering how much of uh, an influence black music has on his own music. I mean, he even did a whole CD of the songs of uh, Robert Johnson. So. That's the story about uh, Eric Clapton. Can I still listen to him? We'll find out at the end. Next up, I want to talk about Kevin Spacey, the actor. Now, when uh, another actor was 17 and Spacey was 26, they were in a film together. Years later, that 17-year-old actor said that Spacey had made sexual advances to him during the making of that film. Then once he talked about that, 15 more people came out, male and female, um, with similar stories about Spacey. Um, soon thereafter, Spacey came out as being gay, and then a lot of gay activists weren't happy about that because they thought he was using that as some sort of excuse for his behavior, and they thought he was trying to make a connection between uh, homosexuality and uh, child sexual abuse. So he was removed from the show he was in at the time, House of Cards, on Netflix. And uh, some of the films he was in and some of the parts he was supposed to take and other films canceled. And I haven't seen him in uh, many years, have you? Um, so I don't know where he is. But here's the thing about Kevin Spacey. He's a really good actor and he made some really great films uh, such as um, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Yeah, this is in uh, 1992. And... The Usual Suspects. This is in 1995. He won the Best Supporting Oscar for this. And one of my favorite neo-noirs, L.A. Confidential, in 1997. 
And then another film, which I used to have, I don't know what happened to it, American Beauty in 2002, nope, sorry, in 1999, and he won the Best Actor Oscar for that. So, um, can I still watch Kevin Spacey in a film? Let's find out at the end. The last artist I wanna talk about is film director Roman Polanski. In 1977, he was charged with six offenses against a 13-year-old girl. Um, these were sexual offenses. He, he was plea bargained down to one offense, but then he became a fugitive. He fled to France and he has not been to the United States or any other country since where he could be arrested. Um, his background was pretty traumatic. Uh, during the Holocaust, his parents were taken away and uh, Polanski was sent to foster homes. He used a different identity so they wouldn't know he was Jewish and take him away as well. And then of course in 1969, his wife, Sharon Tate, brutally murdered by the Manson family. Uh, Polanski's made some uh, great films, including Repulsion. This is in 1965, and a very kind of creepy psychological drama. Rosemary's Baby, 1968. And this is really the film that kind of created the modern horror film. In other words, a horror film that is set in a modern setting. Um, Chinatown, maybe the best neo-noir ever made, definitely in my top 10 of all time. This is 1974. The Tenant, this is a 1976 that uh, it's sort of like a male version of Repulsion and Polanski actually stars in the uh, title role. And then The Pianist, which I do not have, that was in 19, I'm uh, sorry, in 2002, and that actually won the Oscar for uh, Best Director for Polanski. And obviously, that happened after his, um, his uh, problems with the law. Um, so he's actually made several films uh, since his legal troubles. His latest one was in 2019. Um, but can I still watch Polanski's films? You'll find out at the end. So can I separate the art from the artists? Well, I pose that question to the lovely Mrs. Kazdoy Closet about these same artists, and she had an emphatic no, and she also had a special place in hell for somebody who I did not mention, Woody Allen. As for me, I'm not really sure, but you know what, hey, I just work here. But I think if I was going to give any leeway at all, it would probably be to Roman Polanski. Uh, because of his traumatic childhood and what happened to his wife, even though that's not an excuse. I take that into consideration. Plus, he's not front and center in his work like the other two guys, Clapton and Spacey are, uh, except for The Tenant, which Polanski starred in. But otherwise, he's behind the camera. Um, what do you think? Feel free to leave a comment or a suggestion down here. Uh, feel free to leave a thumbs up. Don't leave a thumbs down. Subscribe would be great. Share this with your friends and neighbors. Otherwise, I thank you for watching and I will see you next time.